what you will see and hear in this video, is forbidden to you. Discovering these things could be highly dangerous to your health. Forbidden knowledge is sweet, but also deadly. Many men have died for revealing far fewer secrets than are found herein. I am not being overdramatic, nor attempting to be sensationalist. This is a warning. Make very sure that you possess the daring, and the courage to proceed, before you go any further. Lingering in my mind are the names of courageous men who have gone before you and I, and are now dead, because they exposed the forbidden knowledge of the illumined ones. Captain William Morgan, abducted, kidnapped and ritually murdered, his lifeless body dumped in a lake, after he published a book unmasking Masonic secrets. Danny Casalero, suicided, having his wrists cut, and bleeding to death in a hotel room, where he had gone to meet a confidential source. Paul Wilcher, found nude, his body stiff as it sat on a toilet in his home, only days after he mailed his exposed manuscript to U.S. Attorney General Janet Reno. And Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, the world-famous classical composer, who paid the ultimate penalty, the Aquata Feta, arsenic poisoning that tracked his body. Poor Mozart. He, too, had revealed some of the secrets of Freemasonry. Blackballed by the order, so frightened were his friends and family that not one human soul so much as attended his funeral. It is said that Mozart's faithful dog followed dutifully behind the lonely funeral wagon. The sad and forlorn canine was the only living creature in sight, as the body of the man all of Europe had once toasted and applauded was taken to its burial site. So, I ask you, dear friend, once again. Do you dare to discover the secrets many have been punished for merely knowing, let alone revealing? Are you sure, very sure, you want to enter the forbidden zone? Before I continue the video, please smash that like button for me. Thank you. You see, we are surrounded by evil on every side, quite literally immersed in it, but the wicked and the deceivers want us to believe that a vildoing is exceptional. From childhood, we have been taught that evil and corruption are the province of the few, that most people are virtuous, honest, and good, that most of our politicians truly have our interests at heart, that the social system, with the exception of just a few deviants and criminal types, is basically sound. With such assurances, most people breathe a deep sigh of relief. Don't worry be happy, said the words of a fun time novelty song a decade ago. And most of us appreciate and agree with that sentiment. After all, it's not nice to be negative, to be a skeptic, in the midst of a nation of wannabe happy faces. Unfortunately, the masses who believe this nonsense have been gulled and are destined to receive, very soon, a rude shock and an abrupt awakening. As Christopher Mark observed recently in an insight-filled article entitled, Grand Deception. The theft of America and the world, the world is completely corrupt beyond your wildest dreams, and the United States is, perhaps, the most gullible of all nations. Mark goes on to explain. For now, grasp this. The world you believe exists does not exist. We live in a form of the Matrix, not unlike the world portrayed in John Carpenter's movie, They Live, except that high government officials and international bankers are the elite who control all you see and hear, as did the aliens portrayed in the movie. But, the foolish may object, we have the media to protect us from the corrupt. We cannot be deceived as long as there is a free press to act as our watchdog. Ah, but there's the rub. There is no free press. Christopher Mark adds. The news is a farce. As is the case with the financial institutions, which are concentrated in the hands of the few, long ago the media was bought and paid for. What you read and what you see on a daily basis is largely manufactured. You are being lied to each and every day. Thomas Mann, the keen social observer and philosopher, once suggested that men are erroneously taught to believe that it is forbidden and wrong to expose the works of darkness, or to reveal the machinations of the vildoers, especially of vildoers who though they act in hellish ways, the deceived world at large, so obviously holds in the highest regard. That is the secret delight and security of hell, that it is not to be informed on, that it is protected from speech, that it just is, but cannot be made public in the newspaper, or be brought by any word to critical knowledge. How interesting the realization that, as Thomas Mann puts it, hell takes secret delight in its ability to keep secrets. Proverbs 9, verse 13 to 18, seems to have a relation to this. It states. A foolish woman, sitteth in the high place of the city, to call passengers who go right on their ways. She saith to him, bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Why do the Illuminati value secrecy so highly? Why all the mysterious, encoded signs, handshakes, symbols, language, and codes? One finds many reasons. 
For one thing, the psychopath, these are the kind of people who are illuminists, seems to be drawn to the darkness, to mysterious perversions and deep occultism. Nothing so arouses the deep mind's attention than the call of the dark, arcane and mysterious, Paul Huston writes in his book, Mastering Witchcraft. Secrecy is deemed essential amongst witchcraft sects, and witchcraft is, in essence, illuminism. Husen explains. Now witchcraft consists of knowledge, and knowledge brings power. Power shared is power lost. Although we have entered the age of Aquarius, along with its attendant freedom and loosening of restrictions, it will still be very much in your interests as a witch to shroud certain of your doings in a reasonable veil of secrecy. The Illuminati certainly do have much to hide. Seeing as how the leaders of this notorious organization are responsible for hardship, bloodshed and revolutionary terror on a global scale, if their secrets were found out, there would be hell to pay. If the masses ever were to wake up from their trance and begin to understand just how horribly they have been deceived, they would angrily rise en masse and string up the elite from the nearest light pole. But there's also the matter of the most terrible secret of all, the secret that, if discovered, would sound the death knell for the Illuminati and Freemasonry. Manley P. Hall, 33 degrees, touched on this in his book, Lectures on Ancient Philosophy. Freemasonry is a fraternity within a fraternity, an outer organization, concealing an inner brotherhood of the elect. The Invisible Society is a secret fraternity dedicated to a mysterious secret. As Hall alludes, Freemasonry hides its greatest secret, even from its membership at large, only an invisible inner brotherhood is entrusted with it. Robert Guffey, writing in the book, The Conspiracy Reader, reports that the cryptocrats, as he calls the elite, consider most Americans to be mere sheep, who must be kept from discovering the black cauldron of dirty secrets hidden to them. The mysterious secret of which Manley P. Hall writes, surely falls into this category of dirty secrets, kept squirreled away in the black cauldron. The dirtiest secret found inside that black cauldron, the mysterious secret, is this. That the unknown god worshipped by the Masons and called by such hazy, nebulous names as the great architect of the universe and by codenames such as Abaddon, Mahabon, and Jabalan, is actually none other than Satan, or Lucifer. That is the greatest of secrets that the Illuminati must shield from view. The illuminated man who knows this darkest of secrets is taught by his superiors and comes to believe that all who are in on the secret are somehow more sophisticated, urbane, intelligent, and spiritually astute than the uncouth, vulgar, and coarse people who stupidly follow after the God of the Holy Bible. Stupid people deserve to be deceived, say the Masons and the Luminists. Thus, as Emile Grill at the Givery comments, the elite conceal in order to baffle the vulgar. Murray Roberts and Hugh Ormsby Lennon in Secret Texts. The literature of secret societies, note that the rituals, rites, symbols, emblems, and other tools of the secret societies are mysteries that must not be revealed to the profane, lewd, and unworthy. How does it feel, dear reader, to realize that the wicked men of the Illuminati and of the Lodge and other secret societies consider you, me, and everyone outside their own special preserve as profane, lewd, and unworthy? To maintain their rotten and corrupt body of secrets, the Illuminati leaders and groups employ symbols. The rites, ceremonies, hand signs, and grips of the Illuminists are based on the science and art of symbolism. It is said that symbolism began as recorded in the Bible's book of Genesis, when God put a marker sign on Cain, who had slain his brother, Abel. Throughout human history, marks, signs, pictures, and hieroglyphs came to be used to convey words, ideas, concepts, and secrets. By symbols, wrote Thomas Carlyle and Sardarisardis, is man guided and commanded, made happy made wretched. He everywhere finds himself surrounded with symbols, recognized as such or not recognized. As you'll discover in this channel, the elite use many symbols and signs to hide and obfuscate their magical work and alchemy. In the Blue Lodge, the first three degrees, the initiate takes an oath of obligation, pledging. I will always hail, ever conceal, and never reveal, any of the arts, parts, or points of the hidden mysteries of ancient Freemasonry. The Order of the Eastern Star, the Women's Masonic Organization, informs its new members that the Order teaches them of their duties and obligations, by means of secret signs and passwords. The Initiate is further instructed that she must bind herself to preserve the most sacred secrecy respecting the work of the Order. Symbols are more than just pictures. Consider. When you and I, as patriotic citizens, see the red, white, and blue flag of the USA waving aloft, many emotions are aroused in our minds and hearts. Memories sometimes gush forth, feelings of love of country, home, and family, perhaps deep appreciation for our country's founders, its constitution, and for the soldiers and servicemen who have died to protect and keep us free. All this bound up in just one symbol. To the Masons and other Illuminists, their occult symbols also embody a deep and varied set of meanings. 
Alex Holm, in Sources of Masonic Symbolism, distinguishes between a mere emblem and a symbol. An emblem is something that stands for something else, he says, while a symbol has a moral and spiritual meaning. These corrupt cultists, because if their secrets should be exposed to the light, their great work and grand plan would be vulnerable to destruction, as it should be. But kept secret, the symbols and signs of the Illuminati exert a strong force. Foster Bailey, 33 degrees, in the spirit of Freemasonry, explains. A symbol veils or hides a secret, and it is that which veils mysterious forces. These energies when released can have a potent effect. To the man whose entire life is immersed in magical symbols, signs, and codes, and who has taken a solemn oath to maintain secrecy and fear of disclosure, the world takes on a supernatural, paranoid quality. Indeed, such men are schizophrenic in tendency, being torn between their role in the normal everyday world and their underground existence in the sordid world of their occult fraternity. The luminous are, indeed, very dangerous men.